Um, yeah. This is an interesting case where we're looking at um, Ashley Benefield trying to determine what exactly happened uh, that day where she fired the gun at uh, Doug Benefield. And, and I think we, rather than looking at her, and I think a lot of us are looking at her as, is she lying? Is she, uh, is she trying to come up with a story because she got caught and she thought she was going to get away with this? I don't know that that's the case. I don't know that her force was justified by any means, but I, I don't know that she's sitting here spinning a tale. I think and this, I hate this damn term, but I'm going to use it, uh, her truth. But I think it's more yeah. accurate to say through her prism, I think makes a little yeah. more sense because there's only one mm -hmm. truth of what reality is. And if someone's overreacting, mm -hmm. you're overreacting. Um, yeah. But through her prism, she likely perceived a greater threat than was actually there. And that could have been from what yeah. Doug had done in the past. It could just be her personality type as it is. She could be a yeah. person who overreacts to everything in life and, and sees things through a very different prism because of a personality disorder or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that struck me is how just unfortunate it, it is for a couple to be in the middle of an argument and have a, a gun accessible. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm seeing so many of these cases where, you know, people, if they were calm, they never would have pulled the trigger, but it's the middle of an argument. And if somebody's got a gun handy, you know, we're most at risk from guns in the household, either hurting ourselves or hurting someone else in the house, more so than the stranger, right? Mm -hmm. People always have the guns for the stranger, the intruder who they fear is going to come in. I understand that. But um, angry people and certainly in couple relationships, people can get very volatile mm -hmm. and very threatening. And it when they're calm, they never would hurt each other. But mm -hmm. having a gun present just really increases the risk factor for a murder. Especially if you're an impulsive person. And I think we can yeah. garner from their relationship. Both of them or her were impulsive people. They got married after thir 13 days of, of knowing yeah. each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and she she was a gun owner. She used it quite, uh, you know, she, yeah. she, she knew how to use it. She had it. Here's some testimony from uh, Doug's cousin, Tommy. Uh, talking about the first time that uh, he kind of met her and realized she uh, she had a gun in her bra. Let's take a look. Did Ashley ever discuss with you that she carried a gun? Yes. And what did she say about that? She said that on their initial meeting, in the political meeting, that she and Doug and Doug's uh, traveling partner in business went outside, outside of Secret Service people, and she showed him the gun she was carrying at that event in her bra. <laughs> That's great. Carrying weapons around where Secret Service is nearby. Not a good idea at any time. No. I mean, no. but uh, judging by Secret Service's uh, you know, track record recently, I guess it's not hard to understand how they got that vibe. Um, but, yeah, I mean, th th I mean, I'm not saying that someone carries a gun as a paranoid person. Uh, they're, they're not. People have been through things, and some people may just find that uh, security to, to be adequate, and that's what they need. Uh, may not be reality of what's going on around you, mm -hmm. but some people carry it. And like you said, if that's that accessible and tempers are high, that's where it gets really dangerous. 100%, yeah. Let's take a look uh, or a listen here. This is the 911 call that uh, took place. Uh, this is uh, the neighbor who made that phone call. That's the male voice you're going to hear on here. In the background, we can hear Ashley uh, crying. We're on the screen going to see Ashley's reaction in the courtroom as this is being played back. I want you to watch her reaction because I'm curious to get your take on that on the other side. Here we go. Manager County 911, what is the address of your emergency? Hi, uh, my address is. Okay, can you repeat that for me to make sure I have it correctly? Uh, the, the house next door, honey, what's your address? Okay, and it's right next door to me. She just came over. Her strange husband attacked her, and she says she shot him. Now, we've not gone over there yet. A doctor, okay, a doctor what's here. his name? Who? What is his name? Her, her, his name is Doug Benefield. Okay. 
I have not gone over there. I'm not okay, I don't, go back. I don't want you to go over there. Okay, Stay on back. the line just one moment. I'm going to connect you over to the sheriff's dispatch, okay? Okay. One moment. Calm down, honey. Calm down. She's with me now, quite upset. The weapon is here. Yeah. You want me to go over and look at anything or just wait you, for the No, I want you to just wait for the police, okay? All right, if you could just get them here quick. I, I, she came in, she was quite hysterical. I didn't know who was banging around that door. said that he attacked her, and she shot him. Okay. I'm just getting that all on the screen, okay? Okay. I know, honey. Come on, come on. I know. Go ahead, ma'am. Where, where is the gun? Is it with her, or is it just... I have it right here, ma'am. It's sitting on the floor inside the door. My door's locked, so in case he isn't... He can't get off. I'm also armed if he does come over and try to harm her, just okay. so everybody knows. Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of concerned with her mother and the little girl might get back there and yeah. find this that ever happened. Don't go out there, honey. Come on. I know, I know. I know. Come on, honey, sit down. Sit down, sit down. I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I just want you guys to stay on the phone with me, okay? No, I'm right here with you. I'm just with her. I'm trying to comfort her. Where, um, where in the house is he? Oh, the police have been one, no problem. I know, baby. You gotta sit down. Come on, come on. There's no. Well, honey, they want you to stay here. If he isn't, we can't take a chance. That's why I want them yeah. to hurry up before the they get back are, from the park. Deputies are moving as fast as their hand. They're coming priority. They're coming lights and sirens. They just want to get and make sure that everything's okay. I want to. So, where in the house is he? Where in the house is he? Her bedroom. No, I don't know where that is. Just become, you know, you know they're going to take him to custody. You know that, right? Okay, just, 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 you know, you just calm down and you just calm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. Okay. So that's a good portion of the, uh, the 911 call uh, right there. We got to see a lot of uh, Ashley's reactions. What's your take on that? It, it struck me as a, a person who was reliving a very severe trauma, and it looked entirely genuine to me. Um, could a person have faked her reaction in court to that extent, you know, for that long? Um, I, I Watching her throughout the, you know, the hours that went on yesterday, I was able to catch it here and there. And her responses always looked very very genuine you know this is a very difficult trial for her clearly and you know it it really in my gut tipped the scales toward believing her yeah you know honestly mine have too um I, it, not that I'm, I'm saying that she was justified in her actions yeah. but believing she believed that she was yeah. in that danger and and when someone is in that sort of state are they responsible then for what they did? I mean, are are they are they criminally responsible for what they did? If it is a reaction, uh, if it is battered spouse syndrome, if there is some sort of uh, disorder or mental illness going on here, um, you know that that would would make someone through their prison believe that this is what's happening. I mean, granted, you know, we have heard. The, the stories uh, of her testimony to previous judges claiming uh, abuse and other things uh, in the child custody. And the court has said, we don't believe you. Um, yeah. one, one scintilla of truth. So it's not to say that she's, uh, it could be one of those cases where she completely believes what she's saying. And, and, right. and, and through her perception, there is this threat. There is this, this, this need, this, this, this fear perceived by her which may not actually be there um yeah. and and that's again her truth you know, through that 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 uh, prism but if it's not the truth that there really isn't a threat but she's believing there's a threat and she acts on her own emotions which may be out of line or which may be not consistent with reality um yeah. is she culpable for his murder uh then yeah 
I've seen juries go both ways yeah. with that, you know, and it, it just depends. We don't know. Um, another thing that I'll throw in is that family court hears so many allegations about abuse in custody cases, mm -hmm. and many of them are not founded. Sure. Um, but there's a significant percentage of cases where judges get it wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we know that when women ask for restraining orders, mm -hmm. the judges deny the restraining orders, and then they're shot dead later on. Oftentimes, yes. We see it all the yes. time. Yeah. All the time. So courts, judges can get it wrong. I, I completely, I completely agree with that. Um, it, this is just such a, a fascinating uh, case to watch and, and try to decipher because you're, you're trying to get into the mind of someone and, and, and you, you're, you're not. Uh, what I, I'm surprised we haven't seen yet, and I'm wondering if we will see because this case is going very fast, uh, if we're going to see any sort of digital evidence here, if we're going to see mm -hmm. what's going on in text between uh, mom and daughter or between Ashley and, and whoever it, it may be. Yeah. What that is going to reveal, is it going to reveal some sort of nefarious plot or is it going to reveal someone who is very scared and very nervous yeah. and 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 doesn't maybe necessarily have a handle on what reality is, but mm -hmm. her perception and her fears and her trauma make her fear that, that something is far greater than it may actually be. Um, yeah. And if that's what you're believing, you're going to react in that way. Um, yeah. So it, it is more understandable. Uh, yeah, it, we'll have to keep watching to see how this uh, this all plays out. But I, I agree. This is why we have trials. This is why we don't just go off of the yeah. evidence at the beginning and go, here's where yeah. it's all going to end. Because at the beginning of this, I was very much more, I think she's kind of making this up, but I'm trying to understand it in her shoes a little bit more. And I'm seeing it and I'm understanding it better going, okay, I think the truth lies somewhere in the middle of, of everything. Yeah. yeah. And, and the that very good, very gray area. Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.